On this episode, we start drawing up the plan for our texting dryer. All right, before we get started into talking about the plans for our texting dryer, update on the scooter, I figured out why the strip wasn't lighting up all the way the entire length, and it turns out it's because the Adafruit weatherproof LED strips are garbage. I mean, that's just the plain and simple of it. Uh, they are flexible. They like it's advertised flexy and shiny and they light up and when they work, they're amazing, but they're fragile. They have these latch chips all the way down them that if they get lifted up or they flex a little bit too much in that spot and they lift, the LEDs will stop updating at that point on the strip. And my test strip is like that. The strip out on the scooter is like that. And it's a lot like the old Christmas tree lights. If you ever had like half the strand go out, half your tree went out and you had to go through and you had to take each bulb off. It's kind of like that. You have to go through all of these little um, latching chips along the strip. And if you give them a firm press, It'll light all the way up to the end. I spent two hours figuring that out today. Um, and so I'm gonna give a thumbs down to the RGB weather strips from Adafruit. Uh, save your money. Uh, I don't have a better option to recommend, but definitely don't uh, spend 30 or 40 bucks on one of those strips because they suck. Okay, uh, I will have footage of the scooter when it's working. I'm gonna have to cut these things and get replacement strips that I have in the closet here and solder them together. It's gonna be a total nightmare, but I will get it to work and then I will show you footage because it will be awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the plan for the texting dryer, okay? Uh, we're gonna do this live on screen here, the plan for the dryer. Okay, this is my dryer. Sorry, I'm not a, an artist, I am not. Okay, there's the door and I've got, you know, a knob and some controls here. Okay, so we have our dryer. And what we're going to do is we're going to see in here what we have as far as the buzzer. What's causing the buzzer? I, like I said, I think it's 12 volt. I'm going to confirm that in the next day or so. But what we're going to do is we're going to break this out. Something in the dryer here that we need to make. For right now, that's a question mark. I don't know what we're going to make. Okay. And then from there, like I said, I don't want to stick an entire platform in here. I don't want to stick a particle photon or a Raspberry Pi or anything like that. I want it to just be able to talk to some other hub. And that's for a lot of reasons. I don't want this, I don't want my dryer to have to always be plugged in and turned on and sucking power. That seems wasteful. And so the other thing is, if I can connect my dryer to some hub or gateway in my house, I can connect other things to it, you know, future projects. So we've got this sort of hub thing. We'll just call it the hub. That, I also don't know what that is. Um, we need to implement that. That's one of the other things we need to implement. And then the last part of this, I've got markers galore down here, is we want this to come up to, oh, my blue's burnt out, come on. We got the cloud up here. That's my cloud. Uh, that we want to talk to and so what I started researching today was protocols and boy was I reminded about how many different protocols there exist across the entire spectrum of Internet of Things. We have so many things talking. We have device to device, device to hubs or gateways is what they're called. Um, gateways to the cloud and back-end infrastructure and just there's protocols galore for all of it and everybody wants a piece of the pie and everybody wants to own the entire process uh, so that it can make trillions of dollars. Uh, so we have lots of options uh, to do this. And then, you know, the last part of this is once the data gets up to the cloud, you know, it'll get back down to my, my little cell phone here to send me a text. And so we have to implement all of these different pieces. We got to build the thing that we're going to stick on the dryer, and then we got to figure out how it's going to talk to the hub, and we got to make the hub whatever that's going to be, and then the hub's got to talk to the cloud and back down to the phone. So there's a lot of moving pieces in just a simple project like this of getting our dryer to send a text when the end of cycle happens. And so what I started looking at today was if there a standard protocol or protocols that I could choose from for this thing, whatever it may be, to talk to my hub. Machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication is, what's that, is what that's referred to often, M to M. Um, device to device, you'll also hear. And so as I was doing this, I was reminded about all of the protocols. You've got 
MQTT, SMQTT, AMQP, COAP, XMPP, DDS, OPC UA, and that's just some. That's just the the communication session protocols. Then you've got wireless protocols that you can use. You can use things like Zigbee, regular old Wi-Fi, UDP, TCP that are built on top of Wi-Fi, HTTP, LoRaWAN, Z-Wave, uh, low power WAN, B Bluetooth, BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy, which despite the name is nothing like Bluetooth. They're totally different. Um, and then you can layer protocols over top of other protocols, IPv6 on, over BLE. And so there's just a mess of things to choose from. And it's all about the trade-offs and knowing a little bit about what all of those are good at and not good at and how you want to use them. And so I originally talked about MQTT as the thing I knew of. And I had also, the other one that I'd forgotten of that I'd heard of was OPC UA. But a lot of these protocols like MQTT use UDP, it's over UDP or TCP. And so I hate to have to have something that needs a full access to my network to be able to send a message from the, from the dryer over to this hub. I don't want to have to, because now I've got to draw a router in here that if it's down, then the whole thing falls apart. And I don't want that dependency. And so that's why I am going to use that little chip, just so I can learn more about it, that RFM69 um, wireless chip. So I can, it's a transceiver. I can put it in here and it can talk to the hub here and they don't rely on any outside thing, just that the two of them can talk to each other. And so that is the plan. What we're going to focus on right now is this communication from this device to this device. And like I said, I'm going to use the RFM69 chip for that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to prototype something like a you know, an Arduino to Arduino, uh, because that chip can't work by itself. It needs to have some platform. I know I said I didn't want to use a platform, but if I can get something that can start up fast enough, because um, the Arduino, when you apply power, that thing will start up pretty fast. The photon is out. It has to go and connect to the cloud, and there's ways to get around that, but it's still overkill. And so I've ordered a Pro Trinket from Adafruit. It's an Arduino compatible board that I'm hoping will have a fast enough startup that I can connect my transceiver chip to this can be plugged in all the time so i'm not worried about that and so i'm going to test an rfm 69 to rfm 69 that's going to be in the next episode um, of daily iot is getting that communication up but you can see as we i'm going to leave this as we go through the next few episodes we're going to build pieces of this out starting like i said with the communication layer we're not even going to build these devices yet but we've got to get this it really only needs to be one way, so just narrow there. Uh, that communication figured out. And so that's what's coming up. I hope you can, we'll see this come together and, and you'll be able to, to see sort of the process of all the pieces that are involved, even in just a simple project like this. And so I appreciate everybody watching. Um, question of the day, I almost forgot. Do you prefer a front load dryer or a top load? Dryer. Matter of fact, do they even have top load dryers? Check that. Washer. Do you prefer the, I think all dryers are front load. Uh, do you prefer the top load old school washing machine or the new front load fancy high efficiency? They come in high efficiency models, both top and front load. Which do you prefer, the top load or the front load? I appreciate everybody watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the Internet of Things one day at a time.